Hello everybody and welcome back to Advanced Maths. Today we're looking at the normal distribution. The normal distribution looks like this. It's a bell-shaped curve. On the y-axis we have the probability density and on the x-axis we have the variable, whatever that may be. And what you'll find is that a lot of statistics in the real world fit this general shape. The key idea with the normal distribution is that in the middle we have the mean and this is the most likely outcome. The mean is also the mode and the median in the normal distribution. It is just the most likely outcome, and the further from the mean you get, the less likely your variable will be. Less likely that value will come up. The normal distribution is perfectly symmetrical around the mean, so we are perfectly happy to flip it around the mean, and it is still perfectly symmetrical. We say that x is distributed normally with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of whatever the standard deviation is uh, if it fits this shape. So, and the symbols we use for that are on screen. It says x is distributed normally for whatever the mean is and the standard deviation. We use these symbols up here. Now, if the standard deviation is smaller, it means the data is more uh, is less spread out. Whereas if you've got a bigger standard deviation, it's far more spread out. Now we've got the mean, and the mean affects uh, where the standard deviation uh, where the curve sits. You've got a smaller mean, it moves it to the left. You've got a bigger mean, it moves it to the right. So we can affect the shape of the curve just by manipulating the mean or changing the standard deviation. The standard deviation spreads it out, the mean moves it left or right. The area under the, uh, under the curve shows you the probability that the variable will be in that range. So here, the probability that 4 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 7 uh, will be the area between 4 and 7. So the key idea here is that area shows you the probability and that's why the y-axis isn't called probability, it's called probability density. We could also have this area here, this is the probability that x will be less than 4. Or, over here, the probability that x will be more than 7, more than or equal to, or more than 7. The area under the curve represents the prob probability that it will be that value. Okay. Let's see how we would calculate this using our GDC. The results of an English test were found to be normally distributed with a mean of 60 and a standard deviation of 15. Calculate the probability that x will be less than or equal to 60, probability that x is less than 40, probability that x is more than or equal to 70, and the probability that x is between 30 and 45. A key uh, idea here is that because it's a continuous variable, it doesn't matter whether it's less than or equal to or less than, it still gives you the same answer. So, let's go with part A, and we can sketch the normal distribution like this. It's got a mean of 60, and so what would be the probability that x would be less than 60? Well, 60 is exactly halfway, it's the median, it's the mean. So half the data is below 60. So the probability that x is less than 60 is just 50%. It's just half of the data is less than that because the mean is 60 and we're just in below 60. So the probability is 0 0.5. Really nice. We didn't need a calculator for that. Part B it says probability that x is less than 40 and we're going to go to our distribution on our GDC from the main menu and we're going to choose normal like this. We're going to make the tail to be on the left, because the data is less than its left. The x value is going to be 40. The standard deviation we're going to set to 15. And the median is going to be 60. Like this. We press exe to execute, and we get this. It draws a nice graph, and it shows the probability that x is less than 40 is 0 0.0912. That is the final answer. So we write 0 0.0912, and in IB we normally write to three significant figures. Good. 
Now let's see that again for x is more than or equal to 70. We're going to choose normal distribution again from our uh, distribution thing. The table's on the, the tail is on the right here because we're going more than or equal to. x is 70, standard deviation is 15, and the mean is 60. We find the probability here is probability x is more than or equal to 70 to be 0 0.2524. And that's it. We just copy that probability down and we write it as 0 0.252 to three different figures. Finally, let's work out the probability that 30 is less than equal to x is less than 45. And here, this is a central tail because it's in the middle of two values. We call it central. So we choose central for the tail. Low is 30, upper is 45. Standard deviation is the same, still 15. Mean is still 60. Your calculator remembers this information. And it draws it like this. And here we would get the probability of 0 0.1359. Or 0 0.136 if you round that. Perfect. That is how you calculate normal distribution using your calculator. That's everything from today's video from Advanced Maths. Remember to like and subscribe to support the channel. You can also share this video with your friends or your classmates to help them in their exams as well. Thank you for watching. You can check out advancedmaths.com for more revision tips and good luck in your exams.